Melbourne has had trams for a continuous 138 years. Horse tram since 1884, cable tram since 1885, and the current electric iteration since 1906, following a failed line in 1889. Throughout that time, the tram network has grown from 0 to 250 kilometres of rail track. But despite that, various lines have been left in history along the way, being closed, ripped up, and forgotten. So in this video, we'll explore Melbourne's forgotten tram lines. Let's dive into history. If I wanted to look at every forgotten tram line in Melbourne in this video, I'd have to go back to 1896, which is not practical. So instead, we're going to start 60 years ago in 1962 and go through to the most recent tramway closure in 2017, excluding a few minor realignments. The first three ghost lines we're looking at were all in Footscray. When Melbourne's electric tram lines were initially built, they were built by local councils. This resulted in companies like the Pran and Morven Tramways Trust, Hawthorne Tramways Trust, Melbourne, Brunswick and Coburg Tramways Trust, and others including the Footscray Tramways Trust. The FTT began in the 1910s with various local tramway leagues pushing for trams to extend to Footscray. A bill was eventually passed in December 1915 authorising formation of the trust and commencement of construction of a tramway system in Footscray. Five lines were authorised. They radiated out from Footscray Railway Station to the immediate suburbs around it. This included Ashley Street Tottenham running along Barclay Street, Rosamond Road running along Droop Street and Ballarat Road, Williamstown Road running along various residential back streets and Somerville Road, the corner of Epsom and Union Road via Farnsworth Avenue and Langs Road linking to the existing tram to the city, and Francis Street Yarraville running along Nicholson Street. Only the first three lines were ever opened, with the line to Ashley Street Tottenham being cut back to Russell Street. This gave Footscray a small tram system of limited use to residents. It was never very successful, however between 1940 and 1954 a link was constructed to the main system. This is now known as the Route 82. Nonetheless, after several years with trams replaced on Sundays by buses, the Footscray tram system was eventually closed in 1962. Today, there isn't a lot left of the old tram lines. The most noteworthy things are the bus routes 220 and 223, which still follow the old tram routes today, although they've been extended and modified through time. There is no obvious physical infrastructure left today, although I would not be surprised if there's still a bit of track buried under the road somewhere. Some of the old poles that held up the trolley wire are still around today, but other than that, there's almost nothing left. In 1910, the councils of Fitzroy, Northcote and Preston all came together to form the Fitzroy, Northcote and Preston Tramways Trust, with the aim of constructing an electric tramway route from the existing terminus of the Cable Tramway just north of Holden Street out to East and West Preston. The tramway was officially opened on the 1st of April 1920, however under the Melbourne and Metropolitan Tramways Board, as the FNPTT had been abolished by this point. But the MMTB had a problem. This route did not link into the city where many of the passengers were travelling, and so passengers had to change to a cable tram which was slower and less convenient. So, a solution to this was presented through construction of a linking route to the existing route along Ligon Street to enable trams to access the northern edge of the city. This led to the construction of the Holden Street tram line. The route began at the corner of Brunswick Road and Ligon Street, travelling east all the way to one block west of St George's Road. As the cable tram from the city terminated on the north side of the St George's Road and Holden Street intersection, to avoid this, the tram route swung north into Pilkington Street for one block up to Barclay Street, where it subsequently turned right before again turning into St George's Road. This enabled trams from further north to come into the city using the Holden Street link and the existing route along Ligon Street. Construction of the route was approved in April 1922 and it officially opened in March 1925. But the route's success would not last very long. Following the conversion of the cable tramway along St George's Road to the city to electric operation in 1930, the service along Holden Street was reduced to a tram shuttle, which was in turn replaced with a bus route in 1939. This resulted in the tram line only being used for non-passenger operations such as depot transfers, with it reduced to single track in 1940. This meant that westbound trams faced oncoming eastbound traffic while travelling along the route, as only the former eastbound track was left. However, in 1941, following two years of bus shuttle operation, electric tram shuttles were reinstated to reduce petrol consumption as a result of rationing in World War II. The tram shuttle was again replaced with a bus in 1950 and it has remained that way ever since. 
In 1971, the tramway's board went through the formal process to abandon the tramway, with the resolution being that the tramway would be dismantled sometime soon after. Without almost any notice, the city of Fitzroy dismantled the track between Nicholson Street and St George's Road in 1976, except for a very short curve that was left out of St George's Road leading into Barclay Street, eventually removed in the 1990s. This was followed by dismantling of the section between Lygon and Nicholson Streets in 1979 and 1980, as this section was under the control of the City of Brunswick as opposed to the City of Fitzroy. A short section of track at the western end of the route was retained as a siding out of Lygon Street, with the overhead left intact for occasional use. However, this was eventually disconnected in 2007. So what's left today of this historic route? At the western end, the old siding in Ligon Street still remains in place, although it has been disconnected for 15 years now, and you can still quite clearly see the concreted siding running out of Ligon Street into Brunswick Road, where it subsequently disappears into a median. After that, many of the old tramway overhead poles remain along the route. There's almost no evidence that a tram ever crossed today's Route 96 along Nicholson Street at Holden Street. At the corner of Holden Street and Pilkington Street, an old MMTB substation still remains fully intact and, as far as I can tell, is still used to this day. In Barclay Street, the very short section of road between Pilkington Street and St George's Road is the only section of the street to have steel poles that hold up the various electrical wires, as if you look further down the road, other poles that are used to hold up these wires are made of wood. This is also the only section of Barclay Street where a tram line ran, and so I'm almost certain that this is a remnant of the old tramway overhead. But other than that, there's almost nothing left. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of track hiding under the road somewhere, but I highly doubt there's much beyond that. Today, people travelling to Essendon Airport can access it by taking the Route 59 to one of several stops nearby the airport and walking up to a kilometre or taking a bus, but until 1976, a tram line ran directly into the airport. The airport itself was first established as an aerodrome in 1921. During World War II, with the aerodrome being used for various war-related purposes, the Commonwealth Government requested construction of a tram line linking the aerodrome to be used by workers there. This was one of several war-related tram extensions, such as the extension to West Mabrenong. The extension included a route along Keeler Road and what later became Matthews Avenue. The section of line closed in 1976 was only a short section of about 450 metres. It began at the corner of Matthews Avenue and Vaughan Street, turning right and running along reserve track before terminating about 120 metres east of today's Nomad Road. The route was fully double-tracked and ran on ballasted track south of Vaughan Street. The terminus had a small waiting shed for use by intending tram passengers. A distinguishing feature of the line was its lower height overhead poles due to height restrictions in the vicinity of the aerodrome. The route opened on the 16th of May 1943. The route continued for many years, although passengers from the airport did not regularly use it as faster express buses were provided instead, with the main usage of the line being employees of the airport as well as residents of nearby residential areas. However, with the opening of Tullamarine Airport in 1970, the importance of Essendon Airport was dramatically reduced, leading to a significant reduction in people employed there. This resulted in a drop in tram patronage and as a result on the 7th of October 1976 the tram line to Essendon Airport was officially closed with some of the rail reused for a short extension north to a new terminus at Hawker Street. The rails were dismantled shortly after along with all infrastructure at the Essendon Airport terminus. Eventually the route was extended north to Airport West Shopping Centre in 1992. Today there is practically nothing left of the old tram route. The corner of Matthews Avenue and Vaughan Street no longer exists thanks to the construction of the CityLink Tollway, with a large pedestrian overpass provided which links into a car park, a perfect summary of modern development in Melbourne. After that, the old route is again obliterated by a car park, before a large grassy patch and finally another car park, with the tramline terminating somewhere in the vicinity of these two things. The only public transport directly into the airport today are bus routes, which stop a couple hundred metres south of the old tram terminus, which itself has nothing left. When Melbourne's electric tram lines were initially built, none of them reached the city centre as cable trams took all the useful routes, except for one line. The Hawthorne Tramways Trust opened a line from Princess Bridge via Batman Avenue, Swan Street and Riversdale Road to Campwell Junction, where it split in two, with one branch going to Burwood via Campbell Road and the other to Waddle Park. The majority of these lines are still in operation today, as the routes 70 and 75, except for one short section of the CBD. The Batman Avenue line was the only electric tram route to reach the city centre until the first of the cable to electric tram line conversions in 1925. 
The route began at the corner of Batman Avenue and Swanston Street, with a two-track terminus being provided. It then followed the old route of Batman Avenue along the Yarra River until it reached Swan Street, which it subsequently followed all the way through to its end near Hawthorne Tram Depot. This route opened in 1916. But the closure of this route wasn't a typical one. Rather than the usual story about patronage reducing, service reducing, and ultimately being closed, the route was instead closed during a redevelopment. With the Jollymont rail yards being removed for replacement by New Parkland, a tennis precinct, and Federation Square, Batman Avenue was realigned to link into Exhibition Street as part of the Exhibition Street extension. This meant the road the tram line used to follow no longer existed. Instead, the Route 70 tram was realigned to run along this new road as well, as well as running along a new alignment on the railway line through the tennis precincts. This resulted in the closure of the line between Princess Bridge tram terminus and near the corner of Swan Street and Punt Road. On the 6th of June 1999, the first tram ran along the new route, with the old route being removed along with the road. Today, there's nothing physical of this tram route left. With the road removed, the tram tracks went with it, and the old road route along the river is now a nice path and some green open space. Even the bit of the line that followed roads that are still there has basically nothing. Again, I don't know if the electricity poles are old tram poles, but it wouldn't surprise me if the ones on Swan Street are. There are no visible remains of the track infrastructure in the road. The last forgotten tram line of this video is quite interesting. It began as a cable tram route in 1889, running from the city out to Turak. The route ran along Swanston Street, St Kilda Road, Domain Road, Park Street and Turak Road. It was electrified in 1926 and continued mostly untouched for another 90 years. The demise of this route was unexpected and actually came as a result of another public transport project. The Metro Tunnel began construction in 2016, including stations at Arden, Parkville, State Library, Town Hall and Anzac. Anzac Station, known as Domain in Planning Stages, would be located at the corner of St Kilda and Domain Roads. This required closure of part of Domain Road during the construction phase. This resulted in several changes to the tram line. Up until 2017, the Domain Road line was used by Route 8 from Turak to Moreland, while Route 55 terminated at nearby Domain Interchange running from West Coburg. From the 1st of May 2017, the routes were combined to form the new Route 58 from Turak to West Coburg, while Route 6 from Glen Iris took over the route to Moreland. Two months later, the line along Domain Road and Park Street was closed to make way for the Metro Tunnel project construction, with a new link constructed along Turak West as well as one accessible tram stop. Since the 1st of July 2017, no trams have run along Park Street and Domain Road in South Yarra. This route is the only one to be fully intact, and theoretically you could run a tram on it tomorrow, as the track and overhead is still there. The only reason this could not happen is that the track and overhead have been disconnected, meaning that you wouldn't be able to get a tram onto the track without using a truck or other vehicle to move it, and it wouldn't have any power to operate on. Nonetheless, it's quite unusual seeing a fully intact tram route just sitting there without any trams. It does make for some interesting photo opportunities though. As for whether the route will reopen when construction is done, it is uncertain, but I personally doubt it. By realigning the route to run along Turak Road West, trams now make two less turns, helping to smooth out the route while the new route also has fully dedicated tram lanes and accessible stops, which makes me think it wasn't built as a temporary thing, but I suppose we'll see. So that's some of Melbourne's forgotten tram lines. I hope you learnt why there's a disused track in the middle of Brunswick Road, or why the 223 bus is so windy and confusing, or why there's a fully intact tram line with no trams in South Yarra, and I hope you enjoyed that. I'll come back and make a part two in a few months looking at the railway tram lines hopefully, but that will take time to film, which I don't have a lot of, so I'll make some other videos in the meantime. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video soon.